Even in the midst of this remake and reboot-friendly era, a lot of horror movies are just waiting to be remade, and they could be genuinely spectacular. Keep your mind open and your grumblings to a minimum, because here's a look at some horror movies that legitimately deserve a remake. Ever since its release in 1997, this Paul W.S. Anderson space chiller has divided audiences over whether it's a good time or one hell of a terrible movie. One thing everyone can agree on is that the film, in which a space crew investigates an abandoned ship only to discover it may be a gateway to hell, is a product of its time which hasn't exactly aged well. In its defense, it also suffered a terrible production history that heavily impacted the final cut. As fans of the film will tell you, this visceral sci-fi horror outing was given a preposterously tight post-production deadline on top of studio demands for excessive edits. Apparently, this deeply affected the pacing and visual effects of the theatrical cut, and it also meant some of the film's scariest and goriest set pieces were scrapped. The film's notorious lost footage was unwisely packaged off to a Transylvania salt mine, and the resulting damage was apparently irrevocable. In 2019, it was reported that Adam Wingard is developing a TV adaptation of Event Horizon, which could be great, as long as it delivers all the vital unseen moments and plot development that were sadly scrapped from the original. Event Horizon deserves a remake that can finally fulfill the gnarly, nasty vision that neither Anderson nor the movie's audience ever got to see. What happened to your eyes? Where are we going? We won't need eyes to see. This stylish 1983 horror movie from director Tony Scott has it all, and still makes for a great, if quaint, viewing experience. The Hunger uses 80s goth and new wave culture as its backdrop to explore a story that revolves around addiction, sexual politics, and the anguish of aging. The Hunger follows a vampire named Miriam who takes lovers that she turns into vampires. But there's a catch. While she lives forever, never aging, her vampiric lovers grow old and frail while forced to subsist on human blood. In 2009, Warner Brothers was reportedly working on a remake of The Hunger, though clearly that idea seemed to have been abandoned fairly early in development. While fans of the original Underground hit revealed they weren't happy at the prospect of a remake, it certainly deserves one. It's worth noting that the original ending of The Hunger was changed at the studio's request to leave the film open for sequels, something cast member Susan Sarandon has said she regrets. On the DVD commentary, she said, "...the powers that be rewrote the ending and decided that I wouldn't die. Nobody knew that was going on, and I thought that was a shame." The ambiguous ending of The Hunger is certainly something that could be fixed with a remake. A 3D remake of the 1987 cult classic The Gate was in pre-production in 2009, but sadly died in development. Director Tibor Tokoc, who helmed the original, told Birth Movie's death in 2012, "...we were on board and involved in the remake for a while, and then we had a difference of opinion and we parted ways. I don't even know if they shot it or not. I can't get a straight story." Alex Winter of Bill & Ted fame was also on board to direct the remake, which he planned to use as a launchpad for an entire PG-13 horror franchise, but it unfortunately never got off the ground. A more modern remake of The Gates could be perfect for reflecting youthful fears of being powerless in the face of a world that seems out of control. The old gods, the rightful masters, are jealous, watching mankind with a hatred that is as boundless as the stars. An American remake of Battle Royale has been at various levels of development since the original Japanese release became a cult hit, though various obstacles have prevented it from coming to fruition. Telling the story of a class of schoolchildren in a totalitarian society who are forced to fight to the death until a lone survivor emerges, the film's themes remain painfully relevant in modern America. Sadly, that relevance has hit a little too close to home, with one attempt at a remake paused following the Virginia Tech massacre. That same remake was officially dropped in 2012 out of fears that it would look like a rip-off of The Hunger Games, even though Battle Royale was written years before the first Hunger Games book. Still, the potential to develop Battle Royale for the next generation still exists. Given the current sensitivity over mass violence, especially when it comes to children, it's likely to be met with controversy, but maybe that's exactly the reason why this film deserves to be remade. Centered around a pack of practical, joke-loving college students who end up being picked off by a mysterious killer with a cruel sense of humor, April Fool's Day is quite possibly one of the dumbest and most fun slasher movies of its time. Leading the ill-fated group of teens is an unconventional final girl named Muffy St. John, an eccentric, wealthy teenager with plenty of mansion space to share with her ill-fated co-eds. April Fool's Day is packed full of ridiculous plot twists and red herrings, as well as obnoxious rich kids getting slaughtered in ridiculous ways. In short, it's everything you could want 
up from the genre. The film actually did receive a remake in 2008, but the direct-to-video film wasn't able to tap into the core comedic appeal of the original. With the rise of internet pranksters turned viral stars like YouTube celebrities, we're in what can only be described as a prankster renaissance. A new modern remake may not retain the same cheesy charm as the original, but it could still be timely and huge amounts of fun, especially if it means seeing YouTube pranksters getting their hilariously hideous comeuppance. The horror genre is long overdue for the arrival of a smart, grown-up slasher franchise. While most horror fans would likely prefer an original take on what that would look like, there's something intriguing about the prospect of remaking horror satire The Slumber Party Massacre for modern audiences. The subversive cult classic from director Amy Holden Jones and writer Rita Mae Brown was dismissed as little more than a derivative slasher by numbers when it was released in 1982. Dog's in the trash again. So go take care of it. What do you think I am, stupid? I'm not going out there alone in the dark. Since then, the film has been hailed for skewering the overt misogyny of the slasher genre in its revolt against genre tropes. Jones has expressed some regrets about having to include gratuitous nudity in the film's early shower scene, which she said was unavoidable. Producer Roger Corman insisted on the scene's inclusion because, according to Jones, nudity was more important to Roger Corman than sex, and you know he has to sell the thing. It's a horror trope that's been gradually forced out of the genre, and even subverted in modern entries like Midsummer. Shout Factory acquired Corman's library in 2000 2018 and have reportedly expressed interest in a potential remake. There are currently plenty of incredible female horror directors who could take a confident swing at it, so here's hoping they get the chance to make their bloody mark. The Return of the Living Dead continues to be one of the most fun horror movies ever made, and one which provides a neat time capsule in celebrating some of the subversive youth culture of the 80s. The Return of the Living Dead is pure punk rock, right down to the set dressing and outfits worn by the cast. That punk spirit includes authentic depictions of punk culture, but it also has an aggressively irreverent anti-establishment stance, which is emphatically anti-military. It's rare to find similarly authentic depictions of young, rebellious subcultures in modern horror, or anywhere in contemporary cinema for that matter. The fact that there's no modern-day remake of The Return of the Living Dead could be considered a real wasted opportunity, when youth subcultures are arguably the most visible and politically active they have been in decades. There's definitely an argument to be made that the last decade has given us enough zombie films and TV shows to last a lifetime and beyond. Still, there's something intriguing about discovering a fresh zombie narrative which has a slightly different story to tell. A modern-day remake of Sugar Hill could be the one that brings fresh life to the overdone genre. As much a revenge movie as a zombie flick, this underrated 1974 blaxploitation horror film follows a woman who summons an army of zombies to seek revenge against the mobsters who killed her boyfriend. With an empowered African-American woman leading the story, Sugar Hill takes on feminist issues alongside some sharp commentary regarding racism and class. Most importantly, it does all of this while still being extremely entertaining. With the current renaissance of black horror pushing African-American narratives and concerns to the forefront of a genre that hasn't always been so historically inclusive, Sugar Hill could make for an incredible mainstream Hollywood remake that's well-deserved. Anyone who holds a place for this 80s classic in their hearts will be well aware of the fact that The Monster Squad, in which a group of witty, talkative kids take on some classic monsters in their hometown, is arguably one of the biggest influences on the current pop culture trend of kids vs. monsters content. From Stranger Things to the Child's Play reboot and scary stories to tell in the dark and the new It, you can't go far without bumping into stories about children fighting monsters. In recent years, Monster Squad filmmakers Fred Decker and Shane Black even had to let go of their idea of a 30 years later sequel to the original because everyone's already doing exactly that. As Decker put it, I thought, well, let's make this movie for the people who fell in love with it when they were kids and say, where's the squad as adults? And Shane said to me, well, that's it. And I said, yeah, it's a great idea. And he goes, no, that's Stephen King's It. The first part of the book and the first movie is them as kids fighting monsters, and the second movie is them as adults fighting monsters. But it's the ubiquity of these tropes which could actually make for a great remake of The Monster Squad, particularly if it added a fresh modern take while parodying current trends. Though nothing could beat the original, there's definitely potential in a story that sees a bunch of decent sensitized kids rolling their eyes at the threat of a bunch of old-school classic monsters. Maybe a Monster Squad remake could finally bring that Blumhouse shared universe to fruition, with a gang of kids sneerily taking on the horror studio's most notorious foes. The fact that we haven't gotten a remake already is completely… Oh, 
Starring Vincent Price as a sour old thespian who enacts ghastly acts of vengeance against his worst critics, this British tongue-in-cheek horror outing is an underrated classic. The film leans confidently into camp sensibilities and takes great glee in some of the most preposterous and elaborate murder scenes in horror comedy history. The inspirations for each are taken from classic deaths of various Shakespeare plays, which played perfectly to early 70s British audiences when the film was released. Although Theater of Blood continues to enjoy a strong cult following, it's difficult to imagine young audiences connecting with it in quite the same way. However, in focusing on how critics can wield their power, the underlying themes of Theater of Blood remain familiar. After all, we live in a time when anyone can take to social media to be as careless and cruel as they like about art and the people who make it. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite horror movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.